In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate a subset of the absolutely amazing Psychor effects that come with After Effects. I created this demonstration project using assets provided by Psychor. I'm not providing this demonstration project to you. I suggest you go to the Psychor website and get these demo projects and work on them yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The way you get there is just by going to Help, by clicking Help and going to After Effects Help like this or pressing the F1 key. When you get to help, just go to Effects and Animation Presets. And down here, there's an effect list. And inside the effect list, there's a little note here saying there are third-party plugins included with After Effects. Just click on that. It shows a list of the third-party plugins. And the most important collection is this collection here, the Psychor FX CC and Psychor FX HD. And if you click on the Psychor website, which you could have gone to directly, I suppose, but this one takes you right to the correct page. And it is kind of hard to navigate to this page from within the Psychor website. So this is good to click on this link to get to their website and to the correct page. This is the page where you can download all kinds of great stuff. Now this is the manual for the Psychor effects that come with After Effects. You can download it here. And you can also download a variety of projects with assets included. It's absolutely phenomenal because it really gives you a sense about how some of these very complex effects work. Let me show you how it sets up after you've downloaded them. These are all the folders that contain all those various projects. This is the manual that I downloaded from the front. If I take a look at the manual, you can see all the various effects here. And for instance, you can go to the Blur and Sharpen menu, and you see the various effects that are associated with the Blur and Sharpen menu, including the Cross Blur, Radial Blur, Radial Flash Blur, etc. And you can see the properties within that effect. So it's a great reference for these various Psychor effects. You can also go down and see the absolute granddaddy, the major effect that's provided by Psychor. It's in the Simulation menu. Scroll on down there. You can see the particle world, it's called. Particle world is the most complex effect I've ever seen. If you look at the listing here in the manual, you'll see that it starts on page 82 and goes to page, would you believe, 96? You gotta be kidding me, right? Let's go down there and see what we got. 94, 95, 96. All these things are part of the particle world effect. So there's a separate demonstration that you can get from the Psychor website just on the particle world effect. And when you do that, you get another PDF file looks just like this and explains how they created these various projects using the particle world effect. So it's just a great way to learn about all the Psychor effects. So knowing this, let's go back to After Effects. So what I've done here is I've brought in several of those projects and the project basic is really the one where you want to start. You open that up and you see that it's organized in terms of how the effects and presets are organized over here. So just type in CC and you see all the effects that are Psychor effects, and they match up with the demonstrations over here. There's a comp for the cross blur, and here is the cross blur effect. So it's a great way to line up these effects here with these comps over here. So I'm just gonna give you a taste of a few of them. There are about 73 Psychor effects at last count, and most of them have multiple ways to use them. And so it'd be really impossible to show you all of them and show you all the various iterations. I'll just show you a few here so you can get a sense of some of the great things you can do with the Psychor effects. And we'll start off with the basic ones here, the blurs. Just gonna look at this first one, the cross blur. You can see how cross blur works here. The way cross blur works, you can open up the effect down here, just press E for the effect, and there's a cross blur. And there are the various properties of cross blur. Basically, you're animating the position. You're also using a different transfer mode. There's multiple modes here. If the first one's lightened, then you can use darken or add as you go along here. So that's how cross blur works. Radial blur, you might have an idea of how that works. Just it's going to be a round thing. Look at radial fast blur. Again, there's a center and an amount, so you can decide what the amount's going to be in the center and that kind of stuff. But you can also choose what the zoom factor is going to be. There's a standard zoom, there's a bright zoom, and a dark zoom. So let's take a look at the bright. That's bright. Ooh, and here's the dark, watch this. Pretty strange, right? Wow. Okay, split two, this is really fun, very organic, watch this. <laughs> and you can do it to someone's mouth as well. Light rays is just so cool, puts little pops of sparkles, little glints right in the edges of things, even here in the forest. Sphere is just incredible. It takes any layer and turns it into a sphere, and then you can spin it any direction that you want. So all these guys are separate layers spinning independently of each other. How about that? I love Drizzle. Let me put this over here. Drizzle starts off as just the still image, just some water, nothing going on there. You apply the Drizzle effect, and then you animate it, and check this out. That's not great. Wow, what's real, huh? 
Mr. Mercury is one of the more fun effects. Kind of turns a layer into kind of globs of stuff. You can kind of blend it in and then reveal something like this. There you go. Now I want to show you some transitions. Start off with glass wipe. You've got two layers. You're transitioning from one to another, from the dam to the mountain. But you use another layer to define how the transition works. So the other layer looks like this. It's just this fractal. And you use that to define the appearance of the transition. So it looks like this. Pretty cool. We'll go on along here to the right. We just kind of scroll over so you have some more room here. Light wipe. This is great. Watch how this kind of glows around the edges. One to the other. Scale wipe. This is great. You can have two or more things that are put together in the same transition going to something else. So you've got these two guys that will scale off together like that. And then Lexar comes in from a different angle. Goes off a different angle. Comes in like that. Pretty great. Now we're going to go to Particle World. Particle World is absolutely amazing. I'm going to click on Particle World. This is the default view of Particle World. Just the default view. And let me show you the properties. I'll go to Effect Controls like so. And click on this layer. These are the properties for Particle World. Just some of them. Not all of them are open. The things you can do with Particle World are remarkable. I'll show you a few examples. I'll show you Cone with a Bounce. I'll just drag through it here, like so. Doing, doing. How about that? Morphing Particles. Here you can have a layer that actually changes from one shape to another, and then you can use those shape changes as particles. And rotate things around, folks, like so. And remember, you can use all these things as starting points. You don't have to just take what they give you. You can use this as a starting point and change characteristics of it. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. This is a demonstration of how to use what are called expressions to control 3D. It kind of wiggles back and forth like this and kind of goes any way you want it to go. I'll show you how you can take one of these guys and adapt it for your own use. I'll show you this one as it started. It looks like this. It's actually a face in there. See the eye there? And the face is being cut up into disks. First of all, you don't have to have it coming from that location. If you want to change the location, it's quite simple. You just click on the black solid here. That's where the effect is applied. And you can change the position right here. Let's say you want to make it a little higher up. Right there. Maybe come in from the left a little bit like so. Something like that. An easy way to just change that simple thing. If I want to use something else besides that face, I'll go over to the project and drag something else down to that layer. This thing with a little abstract wave there, just drag it down here. Now it doesn't automatically latch onto it right now. It's going to be visible. But I can tell the particle world to go to that one instead just by going down to texture here. Change to this layer instead. Just turn off the visibility. Now I've replaced it. So you can use the starting point and put your own thing in like that. It's just remarkable, all the various possibilities you have. And finally, I'll show you this last one here. I'm going to switch over here from half to full. And from this view over here to final quality, so you can really see this thing looking nice. These beautiful butterflies coming in here. All animated differently. They're not all equal. Notice how they flutter here sometimes. That's just Particle World at work using the butterflies as the source. So that is a taste, and I mean just a taste, of all the various Psychor effects. I urge you to go to the Psychor website, download all these sample projects, look at them, take some notes, decide which one you want to, let's say, use in your projects, and then take a look at how you can adapt them, read the instructions, and to see all the things you can do with these Psychor effects.